Meet TensorFlow Timmy. He's on the cutting edge of absolutely nothing. Right now, he's swiping on Tinder, convinced that his soulmate is going to appear between a blurry selfie and a list of generic hobbies. He thinks he's networking. Okay, gotta optimize this bio. Aspiring AI enthusiast, currently learning about uh, image recognition from this really cool tutorial where this guy codes for like two hours straight. Ah, <sighs> still no matches. Weird. Meet PyTorch Peter. He's on a different plane. While Timmy's optimizing his dating profile, Peter's optimizing neural networks. Interesting. The original learning rate was 10 to the negative 4. Let's see what happens if I scale it with a cosine schedule. Yes! Finally some real guidance. Maybe another cat versus dog classifier is the key to unlocking my potential. Okay, let's do this. Time to copy, I mean learn. While Timmy's copying guided projects, Peter is dissecting the latest advancements in generative AI. He's not just consuming knowledge, he's starting to add to it. The difference is pretty clear. Timmy is a follower, Peter is a leader. Timmy's consuming, Peter's creating, Timmy's hoping for a lucky break, and Peter's building his own opportunities. Alright, let's have an honest conversation. If that skit with Timmy felt a little too close to home, don't worry. You're not alone. I see so many aspiring engineers stuck in the same rut of watching endless tutorials, copying guided projects, but not really getting anywhere. No offers. And I genuinely get it because I was in the same place. LLMs can feel so overwhelming. There's so much info out there, so many roadmaps, so many easy projects claiming to be your ticket to success. But the truth is, the old playbook for breaking into this field just isn't working anymore. And I learned this the hard way myself. I remember thinking that a good GPA and a few simple projects would be enough. I was a good student. I followed the tutorials built the same generic projects as everyone else, and started hoping that job offers would roll in. But guess what? Absolutely nothing. It wasn't until I shifted my focus completely, until I started doing what most people aren't, that everything started to change. That's when I started reading actual research papers, grappling with the trickier concepts, and building projects from scratch. And that shift made all the difference. Before I even graduated, I was interning at Amazon, making over $80 an hour. And the day I graduated, I received multiple new grad offers, paying over $240,000 a year. And those weren't just lucky breaks, they were the direct result of my portfolio. Since then, I've had the incredible opportunity of collaborating with people like 3Blue1Brown and Neatcode. But more importantly, I've had the privilege to guide thousands of students into landing their dream internship and full-time position. If you want to learn more about how my team and I help students land their dream offer, head to the link in the description. But that's not what today's video is about. Today, I want to cut through the BS and give you the exact plan to build a standout portfolio and start landing those high paying offers that you deserve. It's time to forget about TensorFlow Timmy and start being more like PyTorch Peter. You see, most aspiring engineers are stuck in tutorial hell. They become masters of following tutorials and clear instructions, but they never develop the problem solving skills that are necessary to succeed in today's industry. They build projects that are a mile wide, but an inch deep. Lots of surface level exposure, but no real mastery. And let's be honest, the vast majority of guided projects that you find online are pretty basic. Sentiment analysis on movie reviews, handwritten digit classification, maybe a simple chatbot. These projects were relevant five years ago, but now anyone can build them. Every other applicant has them in their portfolio. How are you going to stand out with that? The answer is simple. Do what other aspiring engineers, 99% of them are not willing to do. Because they might be lazy, but you, my friend, are extremely ambitious. You need to go deeper. You need to build projects that A, demonstrate a true understanding of the concepts, and B, show your ability to even innovate. 
And that's why I'm telling you to focus on just two key projects. One, implementing a research paper from scratch, and two, fine-tuning an open source LLM, like a Mistral or Llama. Mastering these two projects will immediately put you ahead of your competition. First, let's break down exactly why they're so powerful, and then I'll go over exactly how you can get started with them. First, implementing a research paper from scratch. This is like taking the blueprint of cutting edge tech and then rebuilding it on your own. I know it sounds tricky, but don't worry, it's totally manageable and it's the best way to understand the concepts at a fundamental level. When you implement a paper, A, you're forced to decipher technical writing since they have tons of mathematical notation that you'll need to make sense of. And don't worry, you don't need to be a math prodigy to understand it. B, you'll translate theory into practice because you're not just reading about an algorithm, you're actually coding it. This process solidifies your understanding in a way that no tutorial ever will. C, you're going to have to debug and troubleshoot. Things are inevitably going to go wrong. You'll encounter errors with your model and you'll have to figure out why. But that's where the real learning happens because you develop problem solving skills that are invaluable in any engineering role. You'll also gain a deep appreciation for the nuance because you'll discover the subtle design choices, the trade-offs, and even limitations of the model. And this nuanced understanding is what separates elite engineers from code copiers. But where do you actually begin? Don't aim for the most recent groundbreaking paper right away. Start with foundational papers that introduce the core concepts in a relatively accessible way. Think of it as building your base. But once you choose a paper, whatever paper you choose, don't just try to replicate the results exactly. Focus on understanding the core ideas and implementing the main components. You can always add more extensions or modifications later. The goal is the learning process, not achieving state-of-the-art performance on your first try. Okay, how do you build the second project, fine-tuning an open-source LLM? Because this project will make you stand out. The ability to adapt these open-source foundation models is an incredibly valuable skill. So fine-tuning involves taking a pre-trained model, which is simply a model that has already been trained on the entire internet, right? It's already seen a ton of data. But we want to train it further on a smaller task-specific data set. So this allows you to leverage the general knowledge of the base model or pre-trained model, but also tailor it to perform a very specific job much more effectively. I'll be honest, companies are scrambling to hire engineers who can effectively fine-tune LLMs. And there are several excellent open source models you can choose from, like BERT, GPT-2, Llama, or Mistral. And if you're not familiar with those, don't worry, it's pretty easy to get up to speed with them. Let's focus on the big picture for now. When you fine tune an LLM, you're gonna gain experience with data pre-processing. You're gonna learn how to prepare your data in a format that an LLM can understand. You're gonna explore fine tuning strategies, like deciding which layers to train, what learning rate to use, and the other parameters. Evaluating performance. Since you're gonna measure how well your fine-tuned model performs against the base model. And fourth, deployment considerations. You'll need to think about how your model performs in a real-world scenario. For example, the task-specific data set could be education, healthcare, productivity, coding, literally anything. All right, if you're still watching, you are in for a treat because I'm gonna go over the full list of prerequisites you need, no BS, before you can jump into those projects. Let's revisit the math. I know this is a point of anxiety for many aspiring engineers. Because of all the crazy math in some research papers, people assume that you need a PhD in mathematics to build projects. But I'm here to tell you that the foundational math you need to actually get started is surprisingly simple. The two concepts that you need to grasp, here they are. 
First, matrix multiplication. This is the fundamental operation that underlies every model. Understanding how matrices are multiplied, their dimensions, their properties, this is crucial for understanding how data flows through models. You need to master this topic. And second, basic derivatives from calculus. Gradient descent, the main algorithm for training AI models, heavily relies on derivatives from calculus. But that's it, really. Just those two concepts. And don't get me wrong, a deeper understanding of probability, statistics, that will help in the long run. But you can absolutely get started with just a solid understanding of matrix multiplication and basic derivatives from calculus. And no crazy derivatives either, just the derivative of x squared and the derivative of e to the x, simple functions like that. Think of it this way. You don't need to know the intricate physics of a combustion engine to start learning how to drive a car. So that's why you don't need to be a mathematical prodigy to start building AI projects. You just need to know the fundamental mechanics and the rest you can learn as you go as it comes up. I promise. I even discussed this with the legend himself, 3blue1brown. And he agreed. Focus on building a strong intuition for matrix multiplication and basic derivatives, and the rest you can learn on the fly. Okay, now that we've got the math down, before you can start reading and implementing research papers and fine-tuning open source LLMs, you've got to go through what I call the elite engineer essentials. These are the foundational concepts and algorithms that underlie most AI models. First, gradient descent. This is the algorithm for training almost every AI model. And as long as you understand the idea of a derivative and the rate of change of a function, gradient descent is pretty easy to understand. Second, linear regression. It might seem simple, but this is fundamental to LLMs. And third, feed-forward neural networks. These are the simplest kind of neural networks, and they're the foundation of LLMs. And if you understand gradient descent and linear regression, feed-forward neural networks, I know it's a mouthful, it's not that bad. And again, don't just memorize the definitions of these three concepts. You've got to aim for an intuitive understanding of how they work, why they're important, and how they relate to each other. As a bonus, you could experiment with implementing them in Python before moving on. Okay, next, once you've got the elite engineer essentials down, it's time to move on to PyTorch. PyTorch is the dominant AI framework these days. It offers a super simple way to build and train models, making it ideal for project number one, implementing research papers. There are tons of resources to learn PyTorch out there. In my humble opinion, the best PyTorch resource is the PyTorch protocol. Every concept, every module, every function broken down in a clear, easy to understand way. The PyTorch protocol used to sell separately for $397, but we now give it away completely for free as a bonus to every student that joins our program. More about that at the link in the description. And once you have a working knowledge of PyTorch, you can start implementing research papers. Here's the practical approach that I recommend. Start with the results section of the paper. The results section often provides a high level overview of the findings of the paper, right? What the researchers figured out. This helps you quickly grasp the main contributions. Next, read the intro and related work sections. These sections provide context. They explain the problem the paper is trying to solve and how it relates to other papers. This helps you understand the motivation behind the paper. Third, focus on the methodology or methods or model architecture section. Depending on the paper, it's called something different. And this is where the main technical details are written. But don't get bogged down in every single equation. Focus on understanding the overall model, the key components, and how they interact. Definitely pay attention to any diagrams or illustrations. And definitely make sure to start with simpler papers. Again, don't jump straight to the most complex, groundbreaking ones. If you start with the more foundational papers, you'll build your confidence and understanding. And remember, reading papers is a skill that takes time to develop, so don't get discouraged if you don't understand everything immediately. Be patient and persistent, and it'll get easier. 
All right, let's come back to the portfolio pyramid. I cannot emphasize enough how important a strong portfolio is in today's market. It's no longer enough to have a degree or the list of classes you've taken. Employers want to see what you can actually do and your portfolio is your proof. Think of the pyramid again. At the very bottom of the pyramid, you have candidates with no portfolio. They're just relying on their academic credentials or degree to get offers. They're at the mercy of the hiring process, sending out countless cold applications and just hoping for the best. And they're often left with nothing, no offers at all. In the middle, you have some candidates that have completed guided projects. You know, the ones you see on YouTube. They're doing slightly better than the candidates at the bottom of the pyramid, but they're still facing a ton of competition. But at the top of the pyramid, that's where we have people who have implemented research papers from scratch, fine-tuned open source models on unique use cases. They have all the power. Recruiters often reach out to them directly and the opportunities come to them. And again, getting to the top of this pyramid isn't about how many projects you build, it's about building the right ones. So I want to finish out this video with some actionable advice on building a top tier portfolio and getting to the top of the pyramid. First, focus on the two projects we talked about, implementing a research paper and fine tuning an LLM. These immediately signal a higher level understanding and initiative. Second, document your work extensively. For each project, create a detailed write-up explaining the problem you've addressed, the approach you took, the challenges you faced, and the results you came up with. Include some code snippets, visualizations, and more. Third, post your code online. Make it publicly accessible on platforms like GitHub. This allows potential employers to see your work. And lastly, if you want to go above and beyond, even write a short blog post or a video explaining your project and add it to the portfolio. This is the most effective way to stand out in today's market. It's your ticket to the top of the pyramid. So if you're ready to accelerate the process, you're in the right place. Because I have two more resources to help you with your journey. The first is our personal AI engineering accelerator. It's called LLM Liftoff. Thousands of students have gone through our program, built a standout portfolio, and landed amazing offers at prestigious companies. The system simply works, and we even give a full money-back guarantee if you're not satisfied. I do have to be honest with you though, it's a limited time offer and the price will be increasing soon, so check it out at the link in the description. Okay, the second resource. If you're looking for another in-depth video, one that breaks down the entire job market of today, how the whole hiring process works, the secrets to actually getting offers, check out the video that's about to pop up. It's probably the most valuable video on this entire channel. It shows you exactly what you need to do to destroy your competition. The video should be popping up now. Whatever path you choose, I know I'll see you soon.